5G brings an increase in bandwidth and a ton of new frequency bands to really turbocharge mobile networks. And believe it or not, this can be done without a full 5G network. Five G offers a ten times decrease in latency, one hundred times increase in traffic capacity, and a ten times increase in throughput compared to four G. And five G comes ready to rumble with three main use case categories defined by the three GPP and GSMA. Enhanced mobile broadband or EMBB delivers gobs of bandwidth to enable higher throughput experiences and greater capacity. Ultra-reliable low latency communication, or URLLC, provides one millisecond latency for sensitive communications for things like remote surgery and automation. And massive machine type communications, or MMTC, gets us ready for the Internet of Things by allowing up to one million connections per square kilometer. Combined with network slicing, this trifecta of use cases allows 5G to expand beyond consumer services and open up a whole new world of mobile opportunities for vertical industries by building virtual networks that are secure, differentiated, and protected. Mobile networks consist of two major components. The radio network is where the new radio for 5G delivers that big bump in spectral efficiency and allows operators to use new frequency bands like millimeter wave. The core network is where the magic of network slicing happens, and it's a key component for matching network capabilities to the requirements of different applications. To enable operators to move early on 5G features and evolve from 4G more smoothly, the 3GPP has defined two major deployment options, non-standalone and standalone. Non-standalone lets 4G operators use their existing 4G evolved packet core with 5G new radio. Standalone means both 5G new radio and a new 5G core that uses a completely virtualized cloud-native architecture is used. No one ever blamed tech geeks for being created with names, right? 5G new radio is used for both NSA and SA, and it's the component responsible for supporting enhanced mobile broadband for mega bandwidth scenarios like high-definition, virtual, and augmented reality experiences. For many operators focused mainly on consumer services, 5G NSA is enough to get started. But like season eight of Game of Thrones, it's not really the end. Using a 5G core means crazy low latency and huge numbers of connected devices, and it's based on a virtualized service-based architecture, making it possible to deploy all 5G software network functions using edge computing. Combined with network slicing, 5G microservices can be located close to the edge or deeper in the network to better match network capabilities with application requirements and allow operators to define much needed mobile centric service level agreements for vertical industries. 5G new radio combined with the new 5G core will extend mobile communications beyond the consumer and make all those cool things like remote driving, autonomous drones and connected power grids possible. And as badly as I want to experience a 360 degree real time VR feed of my favorite athlete, a connected world where mobile payments are everywhere, streetlights are connected to an intelligent national traffic system, and machine vision sees more than I do, seems even cooler. Thanks for watching. You think Daenerys is actually dead? I don't know, man. I don't know.